Okay, now that we've covered the viewport, we're going to look at shapes. Now, I'm in polygons, polygons. Now, you can choose animation, polygons, surfaces, dynamics, rendering, and dynamics, and customize dot dot dot. But um, that just changes um, the buttons that I can choose from. But it's going to be a polygons, polygons mode. Now, you'll have this option. I'm going to just create a cube. Now, it's going to come up with this little thing. It's going to give me basically instructions on what to do. So I drag, create the base, and I drag up, create the height. Now, that's my cube, but what if I want a perfect cube? Now, there's two ways we can go about this. I'll just delete this. And I'll go create polygon primitives and I'll turn off interactive creation. Now what happens when I click cube? Now it'll just create a one by one by one cube in the center of the scene. Now let's just turn that back on and I'll show you the other way. Drag up, drag up. Now, over here, we have the channel box. This is the everything you need to know about your object. Now, rotate and scale and visibility are obvious, but what you might know is translate X, Y, and Z. That's where it is. Now, if I set these to zero by pressing zero and tab, this is in the dead center of my scene. If I click on inputs, uh, it's uh, polycube one, which is its, uh, the object's name. Under inputs, it'll be really slow, which is annoying. And then it'll come up with this. This is the subdivisions, width, height, and depth, and its actual size. Now, let's just set this to two by two by two. Now I have a perfect two by two by two cube. Now, these subdivisions are how many times it's broken across the top. Now I can change this to 2 by 2 by 2. Now I have, on each face of my cube, I have four squares. Now if I hold down right click, I get this cool circular menu. Now, if you've worked with 3D programs before, you'll know faces are like shape bits, edges are the lines between them, and vertexes are the points where the lines meet. Now, we're currently in object mode, so let's change to vertex mode. You'll notice instantly that it's change. That's because we're in a different mode and different shit happens. Now, what I can do, I can select these and I can play with around them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over how we play around with them. If I go back to object mode, it'll go back to normal. Now, over here we have move, rotate, and scale. The keyboard shortcuts for these are W for move, and I'll get this axis in the middle, which is identical to this. And I can move it up and down, move around, and yeah. And E for rotate, and I'll get these circles. I can just click in the middle and it'll move right, like loosely, but you're better off using these wires that'll move it only on one axis. And you'll notice that if I go back to W, the arrows stayed the same. That's because they're global, not local. But if I go back to and now, um, the third one, R, is scale. Now, I can grab the one in the middle, and that'll scale it evenly in every direction. I can grab it along here and make it longer. I can grab it along here and make it shorter. I can grab it along here and make it a bit longer. So now I have a oddly scaled and moved cube. Now... The exact same stuff can be done to vertexes and faces. Now, let's go back to vertex mode. 
and we'll just click and drag and select some face uh, vertexes. Like scale them down a bit, move them out, down, and I have a funky shape. Well, semi funky. And that, and also we can go to face mode, and now I can select faces. And you can't move those around, but you can do some other nifty things to these. Now, no, you can move them. Um, you can go edit mesh, extrude. Now, what this is going to do is going to create a different looking um, con control points here, and I can click and drag on each one, and it'll scale down. So now I've created a square inside the old square, and I can move it out. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Now if I click off, click back on, then go edit mesh, extrude, And move this up, and we'll go back to object mode. Oh. Now I have an even funkier looking shape. And that's the basics of what you need to know about shapes in Maya 2011 because I have a time machine.